This is Joe Pollack with Spivey Consulting Group, and today's podcast is all about finding work-life balance in law school. The number one thing that I'm hoping you're going to take away from this podcast is that your emphasis should be on the balance part of work-life balance. So there's not, you know, an absolute right or wrong answer for how to do any of this. And you're going to have to experiment a little bit to find what works for you, but I want you to focus on the balance. So I know it'd be a lot easier if I could just tell you exactly, here's how you achieve work-life balance. You know, if I can say, here are the three secrets to work-life balance, here are the four rules to work-life balance, something like that. But I can't do that. Uh, and really nobody else can either. Uh, but I do think that I can offer some helpful advice. And, you know, the most important top takeaway from the podcast is focus on finding the balance part of work-life balance. So keep that in mind as we go through my pieces of advice here. So piece of advice number one, remember that you are in control. So the idea here is that you've got agency in your life. It, it can totally feel like all of your friends are doing things a certain way uh, or that you've got family pressure or cultural pressure that's pushing you towards a certain path. You may find that you've got a little voice in your head or, or even like a real life voice from a, a parent or a relative who's saying, you've got to go to law school. You have to have the best grades. You have to work in a big law firm. And if you listen to that voice, maybe the voice is going to say, you've got to keep focused on law school and you have to give up everything else in your life to focus on law school. It's got to be a solid pursuit. And if you listen to that voice, uh, you could you could find yourself totally stressed out. And the truth is, at least in my opinion, you can't be successful and happy in law school if you're studying law for someone else. I, I mean, you have to be going to law school because you want to go to law school. And it's not because you want to be somebody else's version of a lawyer. It's going to be a whole lot easier to get through law school if you can visualize yourself as some kind of lawyer because you want to go to law school, not because somebody else wants you to go to law school. So my recommendation is, uh, let's turn that around. So instead of hearing a voice that says, you have to go to law school, you have to have top grades, something bad is going to happen to you if you don't do those things, let's replace that with some positive self-talk. And here's my example. Here we go. You don't have to be a lawyer. You made a decision to attend law school because you want to. You could be doing anything else. It could be any other job in the world. It could be a paralegal. It could be an accountant, second grade teacher, fitness instructor. And if you worked for a couple of years before law school, you know what I mean. Maybe you were doing those kinds of jobs. You could be doing anything else. But the point is, you aren't doing anything else. You have chosen, you have decided that you don't want to be a paralegal or something else because you want to be a lawyer. So that's piece of advice number one. Remember that you are in control. Next, I'm going to give you piece of advice numbers two and three, which are more practical tips for work-life balance, specifically in law school. There's a ton of things that I, I really could have chosen to say about work-life balance, but I'm picking these two because I think that they uh, touch on common issues for law students in particular. So piece of advice number two, be frugal, but not too frugal with your rent. Law school is expensive. Tuition, rent, groceries, transportation. Hey, law school was expensive when I went to law school. It's still expensive now. And if you're using student loans uh, for, for some of your educational expenses or, or all of your educational expenses, you might find a moment where you have become acutely aware of just how much accrued interest you will one day have to repay. And that's going to push you towards uh, being frugal. And I think in general, that's that's a good idea. You should you should create a budget for law school and you should try to stick to your budget. But on the other hand, there's study after study that confirm that personal finances, money matters are a major source of stress in people's lives. So for this piece of advice, let's focus just on one aspect. We're going to focus on your rent. And uh, when I say focus on your rent, what I really mean is we're going to focus on the trade-off between your rent cost and your commute. So here's that balance theme sneaking up on us. I read an interesting uh, study from 2017 from a university in the UK that found that an increase in commute time of 10 minutes each way reduced job satisfaction to the same degree as a 19% decrease in salary. So getting back 10 minutes each way of commute, so 20 minutes a day of free time that you're getting back, was worth 19% of salary to the people in the study. Now that's you know, clearly not exactly applicable 
to law school. Law school is not a job. Uh, law school, you're not getting a salary for it. You're, you're, in fact, you're paying tuition. But I still think that you can keep this kind of research in mind when you're choosing where you're going to live during law school. So the question here is, would you pay 19% more in rent in order to have a shorter commute? And, you know, you may not have exactly 19% in front of you between two different apartments, but, you know, 10% more. Would you pay 10% more uh, for a certain apartment if you have that option? And I would say you should consider that option because maybe you might find yourself to be happier. If you could pay a little bit more in rent and have a shorter commute, uh, it might go a long way to making you happier. So piece of advice number two, it's fine to be frugal in law school. I encourage you to be frugal in law school, but don't be too frugal, especially with your rent. Piece of advice number three, find some low commitment hobbies. So I definitely think that you should keep yoga class. You should keep board game night. You should keep movie club. You should keep long walks on with your dog. You should keep whatever it is that you do for fun. So don't quit those things just because you start law school. There's no need to do that. And I think that's the, the, wrong, the wrong idea here. The point is you need to find the balance, here's the balance, between studying and recreation. And that balance is going to shift throughout the semester. So take advantage of the opportunity to de-stress when you can. Uh, it's frankly just going to be easier to interact with your hobbies at the beginning of the semester before you get into um, heavy studying for exams and exam period itself. So think about it like this. This is how I visualize this. So assume that your stress level is going to spike, you know, to a high level during exam period, no matter what you do. Exams are hard. Law school's hard. Law school exams are hard. It's going to be stressful. You're going to need some time to study for your exams. So there will probably come a moment during exam period or right before exam period, when you are going into intense study mode, you've just got to have your other commitments be flexible at that time. So you've got to be able to have the ability to say, I'm skipping Pilates today because I need to go study, or uh, I got to tell my trivia team I'm just going to catch up with them next time after exams are over. But since you know that your stress level is going to spike during exams, and, and you know that because I'm telling you if you didn't know it before, I think you should do what you can to reduce your overall stress level you know, earlier in the semester. So that will help you to find balance overall, even if there are certain moments where you're on one extreme or the other. You're heavily into studying, heavily into school, or maybe some other times you're on you know, winter break and you don't really have to think about school stuff at all. Here's my favorite example of a low commitment hobby. So this is, comes from when I was an admissions officer at the University of Michigan Law School. So I knew a great student, and she's now a great attorney, who was recognized. She got some kind of campus-wide award or recognition for being uh, among the top students who attended the greatest number of home sports games. I think she was like top three for the whole campus, and I think that she was kind of disappointed because... As I recall, she was flirting with the number one spot, uh, at least for a period of time, uh, and then she ended up in probably the top three or the top five, something like that. But think about that for a moment. There's 45,000 students on this campus, University of Michigan campus, and it's known for its athletic tradition. And there's a law student, a law student who's on law review, she's a good student, who went to more home games than anybody else. And I know how she did it. Uh, what she would do is she'd take her backpack to the water polo matches and the gymnastics meets, you know, whatever was going on that day. And she'd cheer on the Michigan Wolverines and she'd study during halftime or, you know, honestly, I bet there were probably some moments where the game got a little bit boring and she studied then too. Uh, but the point is that it worked for her. She had fun. She got out of the library, which is what she wanted to do. She got her studying done. So low commitment hobbies for the win. And that's what I think you should do too. find some low commitment hobbies that you can use at times to de-stress and that aren't going to require you to take away from your studying at times when you really need to focus on studying like during exams. So that's about it for this podcast on work-life balance in law school. Uh, my three pieces of advice are remember that you're in control, be frugal, but not too frugal with your rent and find some low commitment hobbies. If you're looking for advice with your law school application, then send us an email at the Spivey Consulting Group. One of my colleagues or I would be happy to give you the very best advice that we can. So our email address, info at spiveyconsulting.com, or you can just visit our website, 
www.spiveyconsulting.com. Thanks for listening. This has been Joe Pollock for Spivey Consulting Group.